Hi there, and welcome to our YouTube live session. Today, we'll discuss how to showcase our MATLAB results like a pro. I'm Nicola Tricka, an online content developer at MathWorks. I studied computer and systems engineering in Germany and started as a training engineer for MATLAB and Simulink over 17 years ago. Now, I design and create free online courses for professionals on Coursera and edX, and I'm happy to be here with Brian. Hey, uh, I'm Brian Bouchel, and I'm also an online content developer at MathWorks. Uh, I studied biomedical engineering uh, for my undergrad and then speech and hearing biosciences in grad school. So I've been at MathWorks for four years, and like Nicola, I help create content for online courses. In this session, we'll be taking a unique approach centered around the soft skill of communicating our results effectively. We'll focus on how to provide our algorithms or results to others in a way that is easy to understand regardless of their MATLAB skills. So this session is less about the data analysis part and more about the question, what comes next? What is the best way of sharing my graph or algorithm? Or how can I support others to come to the same conclusion about the data as I did? Yeah, I'm, I'm super excited that we're focusing on this topic. So we really want to highlight how to make your results stand out. So maybe you're a biologist and you need a high quality visualization you could publish in a research article. Or maybe you're an engineer that needs to produce a report to share with colleagues. And since the session is called Beyond the Code, we're not going to write that much code here, like at all. But if you are curious, uh, go to MATLAB Essentials, a free online course on the edX platform. We'll post the link to the course in the description below the video. And uh, the course covers everything you need to know, from handling and analyzing different types of data to creating impactful visualizations and more. Since we'll use examples from the course to showcase our MATLAB results, you get a sneak preview of the course content. And later, we'll share some details. Yeah, so I guess let's get started uh, with the key question that we want to answer. What happens when we're done with our analysis? How do we share our reports and our results in an impactful way? There is such a strong need for professionals these days. Um, just to show our work and to tell our story with data or to provide our algorithms to others in a way so that they can quickly use them and maybe even without knowing any MATLAB. So let's check out the overview, uh, the overview slides for today, Brian. Yes, uh, let's go to the PowerPoint. I believe it should be up. Here we go. Perfect, thank you, Brian. Today, we'll explore four different use cases and impactful professional solutions for showcasing our results. A graphic, a report, an interactive notebook, and an app. So let's start with sharing a simple plot or graph. Yeah, so to uh, follow along with us, uh, click the link in the description. Um, it will give you access to all the necessary files, and it's free to try out. Um, so to get started making our graphic, our first way of showca uh, showcasing your MATLAB results, uh, we're going to need some data. So the data that we're going to be working with consists of timestamps and geographic coordinates um, from Blue Whale satellite tracking data. Uh, it's the same data set we use in our MATLAB Essentials course on edX. So <coughs> uh, the data was collected. Um, off in the Pacific Ocean, off the coast of North America. Uh, it was collected over several research studies that span about 15 years. So we want to put ourselves in the shoes of a scientist analyzing this data. Uh, let's say that we've taken uh, the raw data and we've gone through the data, we've already gone through the process of cleaning it and processing it. Now we want to share our results. And by results, we mean visualizing the pre-processed data. And this is a great way to help everyone understand our work. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So let's say we want to make a figure with this table of data for a publication or a presentation. How do we make an impactful figure? So let's go to MATLAB and try this out. And while Brian switches to MATLAB, remember we put the link to the description um, down below the video. And if you follow it, MATLAB will open in your browser and copy all the code files for you. Yeah, exactly. So if you click this link, um, you should see a setup script here. It'll say setup for Beyond the Code, showcasing your MATLAB results like a pro. 
And if you click this button, download data, it will go through the process of downloading and creating all the necessary data sets to get us ready for the live stream. Let me quickly check if we have some questions in um, the chat already. Doesn't look like it. So um, go ahead, ask us questions about what we do. We are happy to answer them. Yeah. Um, so we can get started here to test out or to start with our graphic, right? So let me open this script here. And I can make it a bit bigger so it takes a full screen. There we go. And let's run it, make sure we got our data loaded. So there we go. We have uh, two lines of code in the script right now. Um, just one that uh, loads the data, another just shows this preview. So you can see here we have the table of data. It's got about 14,000 data points that are all the individual recordings from whales. So we have lots of different whales and also lots of different recordings from the same whales. <coughs> so how do I visualize this? What sort of story can I tell? to make an impact. Um, there's a lot of different ways to pick a visualization, but I'm going to pick a interactive way that's going to help me make a decision about which visualization. I'm going to use what's something called the Create Plot Live Task. Uh, it's an interactive tool uh, that's great for making plots. So I'm going to go up here to the tool strip, click on Task, and click Create Plot. So that's going to take a second to load. <coughs> Excuse me. There we go. All right. And then I'm going to select my data, my whales data there. And there we go. We have our preview of the live task. And um, let me just check. I cannot see the uh, different plotting options, Brian. Is that just on my end? text, not pictures. I don't know if that's working for you. I can try and uh, just Me too. refresh the page if you let's, like. Let's, yeah, let's refresh that for a second so we get the full experience. Sure. And that can happen um, anytime. So we are uh, live. We are uh, working in MATLAB in the browser. So this can happen um, naturally with uh, online services. So what you can do in case this happens to you, just reload the browser page and you're good to go. Yeah, that'll take another second to Let's come up. See. That's fine. Yeah, let me check the comments for a second. Um, we now have a link also in the comments to follow along with us, so that's great. Uh, please just click the link, and then you will be guided to uh, MATLAB online automatically, and you can download the files there right away. It's all set up for you, and it's super easy to use, so don't hesitate. Just try it. So, Brian, what's going on on your end? It looks like it's loading. That's good. Yeah, it looks like it's loading. Might have to cut away while we refresh it one more time. Sure. And hello to Prasanna from India in the meantime. Thanks for joining. We're happy to have you here. Mm -hmm. All right. Try and reload once more. I could try reloading this in a separate window. Don't know if that'll help, but if that doesn't work. Yeah, let's just check it out. And it's great to see for our watchers what to do in case that happens to them as well. So that's perfect. Let's just roll with it. <laughs> so I'm trying to load it on a different monitor. We can always go to the desktop version of MATLAB if we need to. Of course. Hmm. Also, hello to Muhammad and Emmanuel. 
sorry if I'm pronouncing the names wrong in any way, but we are happy to have you here. Welcome. Yeah, I'll keep an eye on that, but maybe we should switch to the desktop version of MATLAB just to move things along. Yeah. Nicola, if you're all right with that. That's perfectly fine with me, Brian. Let's go there. Okay. So, um, what was the last point where we were? You had the live script open um, to create a nice visualization with the create plot life task. So, let's just go there, open the live script again, um, maximize the view so we have. Uh, everything we need and we see everything that we need and uh, again just uh, put in the create plot life task there's an interactive uh, tool to help us visualize our data and this looks so much better now look at this <laughs> <laughs> so we select the data um, and as Brian do, does that we'll see a slight change on the screen so let's do that there we go now I have the whales data loaded into the live task perfect and what I absolutely love about this tool is the options we see here. That's why we did the practice of uh, trying to get this right, uh, because now you see all the different visualization options. And as soon as we select our data, it filters the available visualizations and we can pick and choose the best possible way of representing our data way beyond a regular line plot. And the type of visualization has a huge impact on the story we want to tell. Yeah, exactly. So uh, remember that we have this wheel of data. Let's say I wanted to see all of the recorded locations on a map. Uh, I could scroll through all of these different types of plots, um, but there's also this filter by category tool or the search bar if you know a certain type of plot that you'd like to make. Um, one thing I like about this filter by category, there is a section called geographic plots, which is great for looking at uh, data on a map. And I'm going to select the geo scatter plot so I can see all the individual little points. So I'm going to select that. Let's make my output pane a bit bigger. And then I'm going to pick my latitude and longitude data. And then that will run. And there we go. Now on the right, we have our figure. All right. Yes. And that's really cool. <laughs> go ahead, Brian. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, go ahead. I find this so cool. I, I like the geographical plots a lot. And I can see how most of the data points are near the coast, but some are way out in the Pacific Ocean. And um, let's just explain our watchers why that is the case, what's happening there. Yeah. So each little uh, circle here. On, uh, on the map is a, a single timestamp recorded from a blue whale. And so this a huge mass of points is just because there's just so many dots on top of each other. Um, but the interesting thing to point out here is just the scale of this figure. So this scale bar here, that's a thousand kilometers here. And you can see that some of these uh, paths through the ocean are literally you know 5,000 kilometers. So blue whales, um, tend to migrate these really, really long distances, right? You know, all the way from off the coast of, you know, Washington and the Northwest United States, all the way down to Mexico. Um, and uh, we, using this interactive tool, we very quickly got to a figure that shows us the scale. And we can use this to tell a story. So the next step is we want to take this figure and put it somewhere useful. So a document or, <laughs> um, anywhere, uh, presentation, anywhere we want to use it. So an easy way to do that, you click anywhere on the plot just to um, activate the controls if you wanted to zoom in or something like that. Um, and then you click here, this export button, and we can save as a any, so I'll just save it as blue whale graphic. Um, and if I click save, and show the uh, current folder again. Now I have this blue whale graphic that I can use wherever I like. Um, <coughs> yeah, I can export this and, and, and use it in any sort of presentation <coughs> or uh, document. Exactly, and, and look how quickly we got there. So let's go back to our slides, Brian, sure. for a second. Let's find the right thing. 
There it is. All right. Yeah, let's go to the next slide. And um, as you saw, a visualization like this is great to share in a technical paper or a presentation. Um, and it's a snapshot of our data or results, and it's easy to share and understand. And before we move on to the next uh, method, let me quickly check for questions. I think I saw one uh, earlier, which is, which is the best plot for representation as in your point of view? Uh, Nicola and Brian. Ooh, that's a that's a great question. I I think the best. That's a great question. Yeah, I think the best answer is it should depend on your data. Um, so this was uh, geographic data with latitude and longitude, so we use something on a map. But um, I I think the best visualizations are ones where you can immediately get the big picture, but then if you look closely, you can always find interesting details. Right. So. For, for the map that we had, you know, you can see this whole Pacific Ocean, you get a sense of the scale, but then you can also look closer and you can kind of see tracks and things like that. But I don't know, what do you think, Nicola? What's your favorite? Um, I agree 100%. What, what I like about that Create Plot Life task is exactly that. So if you have not a great idea at the beginning which way you should go with your visualization, select your data first, and then based on that selection, you get like a subset of possibilities of what you could do. And then you can try out several ways and decide for yourself which one tells your story the best way. Yeah, perfect. All right, so let's move on to the next scenario, I think. Um, we still have another question. Let me quickly check. Sure. Um, there is a question. Uh, if it's possible to generate code to plot the figure and use it in a separate script, which is an awesome question as well. So maybe we can just uh, go quickly there sure, and sure. show how this is done because it's super quick. We can just squeeze that right yes. in. Yes, let's go back to MATLAB real quick. Make the figure maximize. So the great thing about these live tasks is they actually generate code for you. So we had an interactive way of picking a plot, an easy way to scroll it, but if I click on this little arrow here, this is actually the code that was used to generate this plot. So I can copy this if I wanted to, or there's another option here. Um, I can look at just the code only. So now I just have this view of just the code, or I can even convert the task to editable code. So I'm not going to click this, so I'll keep the, the live task. But if I were to click this, I would just see this code, and it will automatically generate and I can rerun this wherever I want. And you can always go back and insert the task again and uh, try the interactive way. So it's really great to move between something that's easy to get a sense of all your options and then just code that you can save and reuse wherever you want. Perfect, thank you, Brian. Let's go back to our overview slides. All right, so uh, yeah, let's move on to our next scenario. Um, let's say that we've done our analysis and now we need to share the, the whole process with colleagues. So it's not just a single figure. We need to share our code, how we got to our result, everything. So in the uh, case of the blue whale data, um, one interesting question we could ask or you know, analysis that we're gonna show you in a second is uh, let's say we looked at the time of the year that each of those timestamps were collected and analyzed whether or not there was some sort of seasonal trend in the data, right? So these blue whales tend to migrate. Let's uh, see if we could find that in the data. And for everybody who just joined us today, we're talking about what comes beyond the code communicating our results effectively and making them stand out. If you need help understanding the shared examples, check out the description below uh, for the link to the free MATLAB Essentials course. We've prepared some great examples for you to follow along with us as well. So if you like, uh, you can also find them in the description below. Yeah, so uh, we prepared a report to go along with this analysis. So let's go back to MATLAB. All right play the game of find the cursor. All right, and open our report. All right, so it's called uh, Blue Whale Report. Uh, if you're following along, you should be able to open that. All right, <coughs> let me just run it everything just so that we can uh, pre-populate all the, the graphics and things like that. So uh, our report here that we've made um, starts off the same way. It loads the data. 
Um, then it does that analysis of looking at the, the day of the year that each timestamp is recorded, and then it creates a similar figure, similar geoscatter plot. <coughs> um, so the neat thing about this type of format is I have uh, my code, I have my description of how I got there, and I have my output, my results, my graphic, and it's all together in the same document. Yeah, I, I like this way of working with data a lot personally because I can take notes and capture my thoughts directly with my analysis and visualizations in these live scripts. Um, Brian, let's talk about what comes next. So how do we share this one with others? Yeah, so uh, one option is to share this document directly. Uh, this is great if your colleagues um, have some MATLAB knowledge and you want them to try something out, you know, change a parameter in the code, run it, see, see how it changes. Uh, we'll get back to this workflow in a little bit. But another option is to export the script as a PDF. So let me try that right now. I'm going to click Save, or no, Export, excuse me, Export to PDF. Blue Whale Report is a fine name for my PDF report. Wait for it a bit. Ah, of course, it opened in a different window, so let me bring this over. And here we go. Uh, we have our exported uh, report here in PDF format. So it's a professional looking report. Anybody can view this, you know, in a browser or, or a PDF reader of some sort. And it has my formatted text, it has my code, and of course it has my really nice uh, graphic here. So, oh, excuse me. So uh, this format is, in my opinion, it's much more impactful than just sharing your code and your figures together because you get to design exactly how everything is laid out. Um, and my favorite thing to do is also throw in, you know, little extra flares here. Uh, so in this case, my little extra flare here was this, uh, this custom color map that I used to color all of the, the individual points. And it looks great. I don't know if our watchers noticed or not. So let's take a minute here. Yeah. I like how you pick the colors to align with the seasons, like blue for winter and green for spring. And when I saw this for the first time, I was like, you can do that, and which of course you can, but uh, little tweaks like that support our story perfectly and they make it easier to understand our results. Yeah, exactly. So um, I made this using a, a tool called the Color Map Editor in MATLAB, uh, but there's also plenty of tools in the file exchange for making color maps. And I really like this um, because, you know, it's cyclical. So I have my, my blue here indicating winter. It's the same at the end of the year as the beginning of the year. So just like the days of the year, they restart once you, you know, cycle through. And you can get a sense of that here in this figure with this, this color map. But uh, feel free to read through this document uh, to learn more about how we did it. But the, the real takeaway here um, <coughs> is that the, the look of this document, uh, the custom color map, all these things are a great way of making your results uh, stand out. Yes, absolutely. Uh, let's go back to our overview slides yeah. uh, and also check for questions in parallel. Let me see. Um, yeah, there's people excited for uh, graphs, for control system results. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, then there's a question, which plot would be the best for one x-axis and two y-axis? Ah. Um, Which is a great question. That is a great question. I would say uh, you would do yy-axis left and right. I wonder if I can yes. pull up that um, maybe doc page. To show that off. Create a chart. We can also link that after um, after YouTube Live. That's not a problem. I could, I could post it in the chat right now, probably. Let's post that. And then bring the actual figure over and take a look at it. Yeah, so YY access is uh, uh, a command in MATLAB that you can add to um, do for your code. So what you do is you would do yy axis left, then add your plot command, um, and then yy axis right, you do another command saying where, and then just plot again, and it will show up so that you have two axes here. 
and I'll automatically color it in a way um, so that the axes match the color of the lines. And it's, uh, it's a really great way of having, you know, different axes. Perfect. Thank you, Brian, for the explanation. And we also have the link to the documentation already in the chat. Thanks for that. Um, so for everybody who just joined, in this session we are focusing on what happens once the code is done. So how do we effectively communicate and showcase our results? And don't worry if you need help with understanding any of the examples we'll be sharing today. We have your back there. Just check out the descriptions below for a link to the free MATLAB Essentials course that covers all of the topics. In addition, we are sharing some great examples, which we linked in the description too. So um, up until now, we looked at creating and sharing a graphic and a report, their use cases, and how to make an impact with them. Next, we'll look at another use case, a simple app. Yes. So I'm excited for this one. So uh, let's say that our colleagues, they like our analysis, but they want to dive deeper into the data. So more so than just the static report. Um, but maybe they haven't worked much with MATLAB or they don't really have the time to understand our code. So can we help them interact with our, the live script? And, you know, obviously the answer is yes. Uh, we can make something uh, called a simple app that's going to have some interactive controls. So let's go back to MATLAB. All right, here. All right. Look at the uh, uh, current folder again and open uh, Blue Whale Simple App. Here we go. All right. So um, this script has sort of the same analysis as the report, but we've added the functionality to only plot a subset of the data. So. Um, uh, you know, we could focus on just the spring or the summer months. And so the way we do that is with these interactive controls. So let me run everything to make sure all the data is loaded. And we should get a very similar graph. Yep, here we go, down there. And now we can pick a different date to start our analysis and, uh, you know, a different amount of time, like one month. So the plot is going to automatically change, and now we have just one month of plotted worth the data. And I really like how this brings some intuitive interactions into our live script, where you can also set boundaries for the variables, for example. So uh, Brian, could you maybe show them how to insert and configure one of the controls that you added? Oh yeah, yes. No, we wanted to do that. Cool, thanks. So uh, I have here just two controls, right? I have a slider and a dropdown menu. Yes. Uh, let's get rid of the slider and we can insert that again. So, uh, Similar to how we inserted the task up here in the tool strip, I'm going to click Control and then Numeric Slider. And what pops up here will be um, some sort of dialog. And uh, now we can change our, our values, right? So uh, we probably want uh, a max of 365, right? 365. Yes. We probably want a step of one. Maybe we want to change our alt value. There we go. Right. Um, and now whenever we move the slider, right, we're going to have a different one. Oh, I made a mistake. I think I, <laughs> I, I put, I forgot to do the lower bound so that we can start in a negative month. I think if I were to go too far. Yep, there we go. Empty plot. Not yep. what we want. There's nothing. <laughs> Uh, let me fix that. Let's fix that. Yes. So <laughs> right click, uh, configure control again, and there we go. Let's let's fix that minimum bound. All right. So we want to start at day one. There we go. And now we have one. All right. And let's move it so that it replots. There we go. Okay. Great. And so you might have noticed this is kind of awkward, me scrolling uh, up and down and up and down. So uh, there's a great option here. You can actually hide the code. So I'm going to click hide code. And now the only thing we see is our interactive controls and our plot. Yeah, so and, if I click look there, yeah, there we go. Now we have option to move our slider, change the amount of data we want to plot, whatever we would like. 
I, I love that. Our live script almost looks like an app, like a really simple app that we didn't have or needed to have any knowledge about app programming in the first place, right? So this is a super um, great solution. Yeah, exactly. So uh, if you share this with somebody, they'll they'll have to open it in MATLAB, but then they can use the the controls to see uh, instant changes uh, of of whatever they want to plot or whatever you allow them to plot, and they don't need any programming language to uh, to make these changes. Um, and these simple apps open up the world of whatever you do in MATLAB to a whole different crowd. So you can share your work with other researchers or decision makers or who else might f benefit from it because it's so easy to work with a simple app. Uh, Brian, let's go back to our overview slides. Yes. Yeah, we can show what is the app good for. Find the cursor. There we go. There we go. Yeah. So by creating the simple app, uh, you get to enable people that aren't, you know, used to working with your code. Um, allow them to use your script and learn from the data, just like you did. So having the controls right there in the script, it really lowers like the the effort, the overhead that it needs to get into the code. It's uh, just another great way of making a really strong impact with with your results. Yeah. Absolutely. Also, let me quickly check for questions. Um, so let's see. Yeah, of course, we have a thank you for taking up the questions. We're happy to answer all of your questions that come in that we uh, can grasp that quickly. Um, there's some excitement about app design, so maybe we should go there next. Oh, well, <laughs> so for everybody, up, aren't <laughs> for, mm -hmm, <laughs> for everybody who just joined, today we're talking about what comes beyond the code. So how do we showcase our results professionally? So far, we've looked at three different use cases, creating and sharing an impactful graphic, writing a report, and creating a simple app to guide others to make informed decisions based on our work. All the examples you've seen so far are part of the free MATLAB Essentials online course on edX. Yeah, so uh, we've mentioned the course uh, a couple of times now, um, but we haven't yet shared where to find it and like who benefits uh, from taking the course. So let's do that. I'm going to have to find the right page. I believe it was this one. Nope, nope. Uh, here, I have too many open windows, of course. All right. And we already dropped the link to the course in the uh, chat. So uh, if you can't find it in the descriptions right away, it's also in the chat to just uh, click on for you. Yeah, so let's just move it in fresh. There we go. There's the landing page. Perfect. The Thank you, Brian. <laughs> uh, and as you can see here, this is the MATLAB Essentials course. It is four weeks long. It's self-paced, so you can do it uh, at your own pace. It's also free, so you don't have to pay anything for it. You have free access to MATLAB for the duration of the course, which is super handy, which means you can uh, try out uh, all the things you see there right away and just practice as much as you can. Uh, the course itself is perfect for you if you are an engineer or scientist who wants to learn from data and communicate results in a compelling way so that others understand your point quickly. Yeah, and uh, it doesn't matter if you're completely new to MATLAB or if you've been working with MATLAB for years. Um, uh, you'll get to see a lot of the common workflows and how they can become even easier and more intuitive with interactive things like the live task for controls that we've already shown off a bit. Um, and then hopefully turn around and then apply those immediately to your own projects. So let's go into the course so that we can see what's in here and look at the various sections here. There we go. Perfect. And within these five sections, uh, we'll work together on importing different types of data, analyzing it, and visualizing our results. Along the way, we'll practice with live scripts, just like the ones that Brian shared before. And we even go as far as creating our own app, which might make some uh, in the audience happy that we are dealing with that as well. And we are making it in a way that it's easy for, for you to follow and to build your own apps as well. Yeah, exactly. And that leads us ever so nicely into our last way of uh, sharing results, designing an app. Uh, so for that, we need to go into the Section 2 project because we're going to take the, um, 
the project that you get to do at the end of the section, and we're just going to take it one step further. Instead of just a live script, we're going to uh, create an app that you can use to sort of share the results with a broader audience. So let's go into the section to wrap up and go to the section project page. There we go. And in this project, MATLAB Essentials Learners will analyze reports of factory equipment failures. And you see an example of this data right here on the page. Uh, and each row in the table uh, captures a single failure event. Like here in the first row, if you check it out, like items are occasionally getting stuck in the scanner spools, for example. It has a category, it's a mechanical failure. It has an urgency, which is medium, and also a resolution and a related cost. So um, the goal here is to identify a specific type of failure that is the most expensive to resolve and calculate its contribution to the total cost of all failures. And remember, in this session, we are looking beyond the code. So we'll start with the solution for this project, actually, and we'll go from there. Uh, Brian, could you please open the section to project solutions? Yes. Let's go back to MATLAB and section to project solution. Maximize that. Here we go. Um, Hey, thank you. There's a question in the meantime that I'd like to quickly answer. Uh, somebody's asking where the link for the webinar files are. So if you look into the description um, that is right underneath the video, if I'm not mistaken, you should find the link to, uh, to the files as well. And if you click that, you are going to be directed to MATLAB automatically, and there you will automatically download the files as well. Yeah, you'll be asked if you so, want to download the files, and then that should open yeah. the the setup script, you then click download data in that setup script, you should, uh, which is what we did here at the beginning of the stream, that'll take you, get you all the data and you'll be ready to follow along. Yes, exactly. So let's quickly walk through uh, this live script. And don't worry if you don't fully understand it right away because that is not our goal. We want to discuss where to go next after you have that solution and how to showcase this result in the best possible way possible way, sorry. Uh, Brian, how, uh, how about we hide the code here uh, just like we did before? Sure, yeah, that way we just focus on our results. There we go. Perfect, thank you. So in a live script, we import and visualize the data first. So now we see the table and a word cloud of the description, of the failure descriptions. Put on there's our word cloud. Yeah, and then after that, uh, learners, they look at the costs. Uh, this is just a histogram of all the costs of the different failures. And you also create what's called a swarm chart to look at sort of the uh, relationship between the factory category and the cost. So each one of these little dots here, um, you know, pr corresponds to a failure. Um, and the more, the more dots there are at a particular cost, the sort of the more spread out they get along the x-axis. Um, so you can see here for the, oh, I didn't mean to scroll there. Uh, for the mechanical failures here, there's a lot more of them, which is why they're all spread out down here. But they're all at a very low cost. And if you compare that, for example, to the electronic failures, you have fewer failures, but you have a lot more expensive ones. And finally, learners filter for electronic failures because of that and sort the resulting table by cost to see what's causing the most expensive failures. So when we check out the descriptions here, um, power cuts or power outages stand out the most. And that's exactly why learners filter the failure descriptions for that term next. And um, finally, uh, we use the resulting table or the subset of data to calculate its percentage of the total cost and its percentage of the total failures. And with that, learners completed the project. They could now share the live script as Brian showed earlier. Yeah, and this could easily be a task that you'd have to be asked to do for work. You, you get a data set and you're supposed to analyze it. Exactly, and in cases like this one, the analysis or even just the data set might be interesting to other people in the company as well. So by providing easy access for everybody interested, even if they've never used MATLAB before, we can make our work accessible and stand out. So how do we do that? Ah, I know what I like to do. I like to build an app. 
same for me, actually. So Brian, could you please bring up the overview slides for us? Go. Thank you for, for that. Uh, an app is a user interface that we design with MATLAB for others. And it contains interactive visual elements such as sliders or buttons. And we define what happens if a button gets pushed. And we control what others can do with it. Yeah, and we're going to use a tool called App Designer to make our app that comes with MATLAB. Um, and uh, you will get to learn exactly how to do this in MATLAB Essentials. So the last section in the course, go through how to build an app, right? So it's sort of the next step from the simple app we saw earlier where we just added controls. Now we get to design where everything goes and have complete control over it looks at. So if you want a refresher with App Designer, just uh, try out MATLAB Essentials. Yes, and again, we won't do that here from scratch, the app building part, but we'll add something to an example app. So let me pause uh, for a second to check for questions, but I think we're good. All right, so uh, let's take a look at what this could look like for the factory failure reports. Yes. So let's open the factory failure explorer app okay. right. and check it out. All right. That's, it's going to open app designer. Yep, let's run it. Okay. Oh, showed up on my other monitor. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. So here on the left, you can filter for failure type, urgency, and search term. And now let's just run this app. Let's see what happens. Let's give it a second. And there you see the first results. So um, you'll see a word cloud of the description here and also a filter table if you change the tab up there, Brian. Sure. Of course, we didn't filter for anything, you, so we see the whole table. Um, and underneath, we see uh, the results table, so the cost that is associated with our selection. And since we did not filter the reports just yet, we see the total cost of all failures. So let's select um, maybe mechanical failures and leave the urgency as is sure. and just run it again. Thank you. Perfect. Um, now we see the table has changed. And if we switch back to the visualization, uh, we also see that the uh, word cloud has changed. So there are different terms now in there. And when we look at the cost table below, you see that mechanical failures account for only 6% of the total cost, but 43% uh, of all failures. So this has definitely changed as well. And we could continue our exploration with this app and would already get pretty far with the starter version of the app. Since this is just part of what the live script could do, we'll add a swarm chart next together to visualize the failure categories versus the cost they each cause. Uh, so Brian, please add another tab with uh, the swarm chart by clicking on the plus. And for that, we switch over to the design view in App Designer, where we see layout of the app. And there in the... Sorry. In the view of the app, we, <laughs> we click on the plus to add another tab. And let's rename that tab to category versus cost, please. Cost. There we go. Perfect. And we'll also add axes and fill the entire tab with them. So for that, we go to the component library on the left and grab the axes and just drag and drop them onto our design um, canvas. Right. Perfect. Now we fill the whole uh, tab with it. There we go. Perfect. And um, so we have the axis. We have renamed the tab. Let's uh, customize this a bit further. So how about we delete the title because we already have the tab that's um, named properly. So I think in this case, we could get rid of the title. Yep. And then if we are ready with that, let's rename the X and Y labels. So X would be the category and Y is the cost in US dollars. Let's do that. US dollars. And under rulers, I'd like to change uh, the Y axis limit. So we always have the same view. 
let's set that to 0 and 18,000. 18,000. There we go. There we go. Updated right away. Perfect. Super. And uh, with that, we have the setup for the visual elements um, complete. And next, we'll add the code in the code view. So that's the second view we have. Right now, we're looking at the design view, and we are next looking at the code view. So please change to that. Sure. And we'll copy and paste um, a single line of code to create the swarm chart. Just go ahead, Brian, and do that. Uh, yeah. And just a second. Everybody watching this, yeah, you just go ahead. I'll keep talking for a while while you do that. It says, uh, everybody watching, keep in mind that this session is about beyond the code. So don't worry about the code in this case too much. You can always go back to the recorded session later and pause the video to get a closer look. OK, how far are you? I think I have it. Let's see. It's supposed to go in on right. Exactly there, under three. There we go. So it's the final thing we do when visualizing. Perfect. So let's run this again. Okay. Oh, popped up on my other monitor again. There we go. And now we have a new tab. All right. Perfect. Let's run the app as well. Okay. All right. Run. Great, and let's look at the category versus cost visualization we just created. There we go. Perfect. We again see that um, mechanical failures are happening a lot, uh, but of course the electronic failures that we see here are much more impactful because they're way more expensive. So let's filter the table for them. So let's click electronic failures and run it again. Perfect, and switch to the Explore Table tab. All right. So the final step we have left is to sort the cost column from largest to smallest value. So a little uh, set of arrows pops up when I mouse over it. I'm just going to click twice, so sorting from top down. Perfect. And there we see the same result as before in the live script. So it's all about the power cuts uh, or outages that um, we need to care about to solve this. So this is exactly where the project concludes because we identified the failures that have the biggest impact on cost. So now we have a live script that completes the project test. We also have an app that does the same thing. So what did we gain with this? Yeah, it's the good question. What's the benefit of the app? So let's compare both solutions. In contrast, to the live script we saw earlier, the app doesn't require anybody to understand MATLAB code. Others can select anything they like in the app and explore the data on their own. And the most impactful difference, in, in my opinion, is that we created an experience that motivates further exploration based on the provided filters and options. So this is perfect for showcasing your professional skills and for making them accessible to a much broader audience. Yeah, this is very neat. So let's uh, wrap up. How can we share this app with other people? Yeah, that's a good point. We have several options here. So the most simple solution is to share the ML app file that you just opened with others. So um, if we go to the current folder, you see the file. Yes. You can just um, download it and share it with others. They can run this file like we did, and they're good to go. And with the desktop version of MATLAB, we can also package or deploy the app to, for example, run even outside of MATLAB. I glanced at the comments uh, while, I was, uh, while I was talking, and I saw that this was actually one of the questions. So what can you do? Can you actually create a standalone application? And the answer to that is clearly yes. You need a desktop version of MATLAB to do that, but it's definitely possible and very handy. Um, again, check out MATLAB Essentials if you want to learn more about that um, and app design in general. Yeah, so let's go back to the slides, highlight our four methods together, and now we can see all four methods side by side, our graphic, our report, our simple app, and then our full custom app that we designed just now. So uh, apps are a great way to share um, 
interactive <coughs> interactive experience if you want to show off. But one thing we want to highlight is a great new way of sharing all of these files. So sharing the PNG, the PDF, the live script, and the app file. So what we want to um, show off is exactly what you've already been using if you followed along. So um, if you would upload your files to a GitHub repository, you can actually provide a link that will open the files directly in MATLAB Online. So that's exactly what we did for today's stream. We put our files into a GitHub repository, crafted that link that you were able to click in the description, and automatically get those files. So it's great for people that don't have a local version of MATLAB um, installed. They don't want to go through the process of installing it. They just click the link. They get to go directly to MATLAB Online. So if you want to know how to do this, um, you can also check out the description. We'll make sure to drop a link for to that uh, for crafting that <coughs> um, open uh, in MATLAB Online from GitHub. But yeah, uh, that is the four methods that we wanted to show off today. Um, if you're, hopefully you're totally hooked on designing apps uh, like I am, and if so, you are in good company. Uh, so just a final reminder, you can check MATLAB Essentials, the last section, to learn more about the steps, and you'll be able to see many more examples uh, of all of these four steps to learn from. So we provided the link to the course, and we hope to see you there. We have, um, and what we have achieved by creating this app is very visible. People who are interested in the factory failure data, uh, they can now explore it without having to code anything. We have made this data and our work accessible to a much larger, larger audience, and this way um, really helps our work stand out. Yeah, so keep in mind uh, the different ways of sharing results and maybe adding a little extra flourish to, to make it more impactful. Um, if you're wondering which way would be the best for your task, uh, make a decision based on the use cases we have here and start showcasing your work like a pro. And before we wrap this up, let me quickly check for questions or comments. Let's see if there's something pressing. If we miss any of your questions, we'll definitely check them out later and uh, potentially answer them as well if we can. Um, I don't see anything that pops out right away. So um, I think with that, we are at the end of the stream. Thanks for staying with us. Thanks for asking questions. Um, we had fun. I think I can speak oh, yeah. <laughs> for both of us. Exactly. Right? Uh, yeah, uh, thanks for exploring sort of the soft skill with us. It's not normally the type of thing we do in a live stream. Uh, you know, instead of spending a bunch of time showing how to code something, we discuss, you know, what comes after the code, right? It's something that they, I think a lot of engineers can can neglect how to how to uh, properly communicate results and really really make an impact when you're trying to show off all the hard work you did. So I'm very happy that uh, you got to see uh, this today. And if you liked what you saw today, we would be thrilled to welcome you to our free MATLAB Essentials online course on edX. Uh, you'll find the link in the description down below. And remember, you'll also get free access to MATLAB for the duration of the online course. Our team at MathWorks is always creating new online courses for you. So check them out on Coursera and on edX to ramp up on tomorrow's relevant job skills. Yeah, in fact, job skills. I meant I've talked too much. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. I I, I have too. So uh, I just want to point out. Yeah, in fact, if you go on edX, we actually launched four new courses today on engineering design and simulation. So check those out. Yes, exactly. And uh, check them out. Uh, enroll in them. We are happy to see you there. Thanks for watching us live today. Yeah, and see you all in the course. <laughs>